the 1969 Dodge Daytona coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again Mopar fans and welcome back to the Winged Wonder as we take a look at the 1969 Dodge Daytona by AMT. And this is a really cool model kit based on the actual Dukes of Hazard Dodge Charger. That's why the window is the way it is in the older kit. Of course, now it's been replaced, the Dukes one, with the tunnel window. But anyway, don't worry about that because we're not talking about that. We're talking about the 1969 Dodge Daytona. So this winged wonder is, of course, one of those highly collectible cars in the real world worth a lot of coin because these things were rare. I think only 500 production cars were made. Maybe there's a bit more. Mopar fans, let me know in the description down below. But, like I said, this kit has been reissued many times. So, before we begin looking at what's in this box, let's check out some of those great box top lids of the past. It's 1969 and the NASCAR wars are raging at Daytona. So Chrysler answers back with the Dodge Daytona. Only about 500 of these cars were actually made and that was a stipulation for NASCAR racing that 500 of these cars had to be made for the street. So Chrysler answered the problem of aerodynamics with this gigantic nose and tall rear spoiler. And because of the forces in the front pushing down on the car at very, very high speeds, Chrysler incorporated these little scoops. Underneath, of course, is a tiny hole through the fender so that it provided enough tire clearance for those high speeds. AMT has brought out this 1969 Dodge Daytona. Well, a few years ago, anyway. <laughs> and as you can see, it's quite a neat model kit. It does have, if we zoom in, a nice build up here with the dual carburetor 426 Hemi, the nice green metallic paint job, the high fin, taillights, beautiful interior. The only thing that was missing sadly out of this kit are these amazing wheels. They just were never included. <laughs> The side of the box here, of course, shows our car with the barcode. And then this side, again, is the same as the other, licensed by Dodge. This kit came out in 2004 by RC2, and I just happened to be lucky enough to get one for our review today. Well, I've had it for a long time. <laughs> anyway, removing the lid, we of course get our nice Dodge Daytona instruction sheet here, which we'll look at later. Awesome decal sheet. We get a very familiar looking body if you've been watching the series. We got our interior, whoops, chassis pan, which are also familiar in this series. Our window glass, our engine interior with rear axle and firewall and here we've got the uh, sprue with the little wing tips or side supports pardon me then we've got our hood and steering wheel and a lot of flash there dashboard and all those goodies wheel backs and engine bits our wheels and rear taillights there's our nose and then some chrome goodies and then these little side pieces which um, blend the nose to the car so I'm just gonna clear the box out of the way try to catch some focus here and then we'll take a look at those great instruction sheets Welcome back race car fans to the 1969 Daytona 500 and tonight of course we have our 1969 Dodge Daytona a brand new aerodynamic car that we're going to test out on the NASCAR track tonight 
well, maybe not, but we are going to test out our instruction sheet. So here we've got this big multi-page flip-out panel. Of course, again, AMT was kind enough to give us the history and teardown of the Dodge Daytona. And then down here we've got all the, you know, how to put it together kind of tips that we need and the advanced tips for modelers, including what types of sandpapers to use. Number 1200, or sorry, 12, yeah, 1200 wet or dry sandpaper. You know, get it all smoothed out before painting and whatnot. Okay, so I'm just going to open up this and then zoom in. We'll check out these panels. There are only two engine choices for 1969 in the Dodge Daytona. And one of them, of course, was the amazing 446 pack, and the other one was the 426 Hemi. AMT has included the 426 Hemi engine, which, of course, you can build one of three ways. In our first panel here, we have the stock engine. We've got our air cleaner, our carburetor, intake manifold, the Hemi valve covers, which are plated for both sides, cylinder heads, the engine block has the transmission on it. There's two pieces, glues left and right. We have our distributor, our timing cover, our belts and pulleys, the fan, the alternator, oil pan, and exhaust headers. And that's the stock configuration. Our second panel here shows the custom engine, which the basic bottom components go together the same as in the stock version. Except here we have a special intake manifold with two carburetors. Two 750 double pumper carburetors from Holly, as well as two velocity stacks. Our final engine choice is the competition engine. This one is just slightly different. Of course, we have the bottom of the engine going together the same as the stock, with the exception of a chrome timing chain or timing chain cover and blower belts going up to our chrome plated blower here. And uh, you got a front cover, the center section, the rear boiler or blower plate cover, pardon me, carburetor plate, your dual hollies, and then your velocity stacks as well. Our interior has a few options to it, so you have to look and really know what's going on with uh, the Daytona. But here we have our dashboard, a tachometer, the a chrome plated instrument panel that blanks out the stock Chrysler instrument panel. We've got our steering wheel, a, shift, a plated shifter, a stock version or a competition one. There's an armrest here with a console piece that goes onto the molded in console on the floor. And then you got your two bucket seats. Our AMT kit has a lot of different wheel options. And if you have been following this and saw last week's Dukes of Hazard edition, you'll see that these are much the same as there. Except here we have the Magnum 500 wheels going into the Goodyear rubber tires. You got an axle pin for the front wheels. And then the wheel back with a little relief in there for that plastic pin. The pin is there so that it there's no metal axle going through the engine block. Our rear wheels, of course, it's much the same as the front, but this time it does have the wheel for, with the metal axle. And then here we have the, the uh, custom competition wheels. And I do believe they are using American racing wheels. Actually, it says in the instructions. You get the nice chrome there, going through the same tires as the stock um, wheels and tire assembly. And then the very last one is, of course, a sort of a reverse rim sunken in type wheel another american racing wheel deep dish you get these big racing slicks and then your regular wheel back is going in there so this is for of course the blown 426. section four shows us the chassis subassembly, and if you follow this and last week saw the dukes of hazard edition you'll see that this is the exact same chassis pan with pretty much everything molded in place and then you get your drop down rear differential exhaust pipes and drive shaft all as one complete unit so very much the same panel 5 is showing our chassis final assembly with the 427 completed engine dropping into the chassis pan the battery going up on the wheel arches here and our radiator gluing to the front 
Panel 6 is showing the body subassembly. So our Daytona wing is going onto the back of the body here, the gas cap gluing in. There's three pieces to that wing. You get the fender scoops to glue up onto the front fenders and your windshield and rear window gluing in. And then while we're here, we've got the subassembly B. This is, of course, the back. For panel 7, our two red taillights going into the panel. Rear bumper popping on, and then our license plate going into the back here. Same as the Dukes of Hazard kit. Panel 8 is showing our custom competition hood. It says remove shaded area, use with or without hood scoops. So you've got your hood, and then the scoop base, the scoop center, and the scoop top. Panel 9 shows our body final assembly with our subassembly body getting the hood on, the front nose, and the fender fillers which glue along the bottom. You get dual coils underneath the hood, glues onto the firewall, the interior will pop up inside, and then of course our chassis comes up at the end. Panel 10 shows our decal application. It says see the back of the decal sheet for application instructions. Of course you get the rear stripe here in three different colors and you paint your spoiler to match the decal. There's also all the statistics and information on the Dodge Charger Daytona down here such as the dimensions, the engine, the length, the height, chassis, and the brakes. So quite a lot to read and inform yourself of the Daytona. And that completes our look at the Dodge Daytona instruction sheet. So now we will take a look at the plastic parts. And here we have our 1969 Dodge Daytona body, very much like the Dukes of Hazard kit from last week. This, of course, has the special aerodynamic roof on the back. And then I included the nose cone and the little side pieces here, the filler pieces, in this part of the review because I want to talk about their fit and finish. But first, let's just take a look at our body here. So this, of course, is a regular um, charger kit still has a script along the window edge. There is a lot of flash on this. Pretty rough molding. AMT at this time of course was just using uh, the same old Dukes of Hazard kit really is what this thing is. Modified up a bit. Um, I do believe this is Dodge Daytona 500 originally. And then they added in all the bits or whatever just to make it the uh, special nose cone Daytona. It's not bad for detail or whatnot, but it's not the best either. Now, the front nose, just like the real Chrysler, would uh, glue on the front here, just the way they did it. And then the filler panels are supposed to pop in the side here and glue on. I might have this on backwards, but... Anyway, it glues on and is supposed to fill up in between there and there, just like on the real Daytona. However, unfortunately, there's not really much to glue the nose onto, and there has been some fit issues. If any of you have built this, please let us know how you solve the fit issues in the comment section below. Next up, I've got three parts trees together, this one having the engine components, this one having some of the body components, and this one having a combination of all kinds of components. So here we got our 426 Hemi with that air cleaner, oil pan, front cover, battery, pulleys. There's one intake manifold with the dual carbs. There's our exhaust manifolds, our fan. Then we've got the scoops for the front, the uh, radiator and the support as well as our rear wings, um, the supports for our wings, pardon me. There's our dashboard, our steering wheel with a megaton of flash on it. There's the wing itself, which would go between the two supports. The armrest on the console, the hood. These three components make up the scoop for the dragster. Then these are dragster parts, so you get the different distributor, electronic ignition I think it is, front cover, for the blower, 
and then intake manifold and a bunch of other goodies. So, well, what do these things look like up close? Well, we can see the same old Hemi engine that's in the Dukes of Hazard kit, as well as some of the other AMT kits that use this body platform, the other charger kits. Uh, a bit of mold marks and stuff, but basically this is the best that they have, since this is quite an old kit. Let's just move that to the side there. There's our um, little sides for our wing. There's a sink mark on top of my radiator here. Then um, on the radiator tank top, I, I should say, our scoops with a lot of flash. Turning it over. Interesting, there's mold marks under there, but nothing on the, the arms of those wing supports. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> Then here we've got our dashboard. There's quite a bit of flash to it. The steering wheel is just plain ugly. Then uh, the armrest, the wing, hood, and other components underneath the hood. There's a sink mark there. There's the shaped hole for cutting in the nice scoop in there. There's some old marks under here which need to be addressed just to make everything look nice. But overall, I mean, for the vintage and all that stuff, this kit really is what it is. Our next two parts trees has, well, remaining components, let's put it that way. Back here we've got our cylinder heads for our Hemi. We have the stock distributor, the four barrel intake manifold setup, the center console, the wheel backs and the wheel fronts with the pins. And then on this tree, we have, of course, our firewall, our front seats, got seat belts on them, and then the rear axle and exhaust manifold entire assembly going on here with the drive shaft. So again, just like the Dukes of Hazard kits, these are the same components. Thankfully, they're not molded in orange. <laughs> uh, they're okay again, it's mold marks and all the rest. Uh, and then you have your seats and the rear axle. Again, quite a lot of flash on my example here. So hopefully you won't get it quite as bad on one of yours. Our final two gray plastic parts are the interior tub and the chassis. Now, <laughs> what's the first obvious thing you see here? Gigantic mold steps sitting inside the interior. Okay, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Look at how huge that is. <laughs> That's like one of those uh, concrete circular stones you put on your pavement for your driveway. That's going to have to be cut out of there with your number 16 hobby blade and that's going to be fun, fun, fun. But basically, you got four of them in each corner. Like at this stage, it's almost better just to Take your sandpaper and just sand the heck out of the floorboards until these fall out and then replace them with uh, sheet styrene and then maybe flock in there so you got a carpet. But you know, I shouldn't maybe be so harsh on AMT at this stage. This is a round or RC2 era kit and they were kind of just noted for not really understanding about you know the importance of cleaning up their old molds. So hopefully if AMT under round two brings us out again, they're gonna go in there and correct this because this is horrendous. <laughs> okay, secondly, we get our chassis here. Let's just take that right out of camera. We got our chassis here. We got the big urtle right on the floor, but these little pegs, I do believe, will keep our chassis up at the right, or our interior, pardon me, up at the right height looks quite right. It's not going to be too low in the body. Anyway, uh, you got your engine bay in here. Again, similar to the tried and true charger that, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, mold marks and seams and flash and all the rest under here, but, you know, basically we've seen this last week in the Dukes of Hazard kit, so not much more I can say. Now we get to my favorite part of all of this, which of course is the chrome tree. And 
Based on the previous gray parts, this is actually the best of what's in the kit. And I'm not saying that because I just love the chrome. <laughs> However, I do believe that this parts tree comes from the 1970 Dodge Charger. The model kit I have one of, but it's kind of quite built up, so I don't really have a review version of that one. However, uh, here we got our Magnum 500 wheels. There's our valve covers for the Hemi, alternator, two carburetors, license plate, shifter, uh, the gas tank, or cap, pardon me, rear bumper, the front grill. Then you got those sunken American wheels back here, and the regular stock American wheels, which kind of makes me wonder where's the other two uh, stock um, depth American mag wheels for the custom. Anyway, something got kind of lost in the instructions there. But look at how nice those deep ones are. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, okay, there's the fronts. So, basically, like I said, the chrome is quite nice on there. Nice detail for it. And then there's our instrument cluster for the custom version, or the drag race version, whatever. And then... Uh, Look at the nice velocity stacks have little mesh in there. You know, on the back, a couple of mold marks there. Oh yeah, you don't need that bumper. <laughs> it's got the big nose. But anyway, actually this, in a way, this is kind of interesting because you could build a 70 ch uh, charger out of this by using that front grill. But, uh, I don't know. If you uh, omit the nose and the the rear wing and everything you actually do have an option of an extra Daytona or a yeah 70 instead of the regular 69 but there you go next up we have our clear components which of course consists of the rear window the front windshield and our rear tail lights they're not too much actually well there is a bit of flash on here but really it's not too much on uh, either of these parts here's our tires now here we have a different version of the Goodyear Polyglass GT tire. This is a little harder version of it, but it's got the uh, little tight treads on there and very high raised tires, which of course will be easy to paint with your white paints on there to get those uh, letters up. You get four of those, and then you get these Goodyear uh, Blue Streak drag racing type tires. These are the ones with the treads. And I've seen these in a 1925 Model T bucket back in the day. And then, of course, we get a nice polished axle. And last but not least, we have our decal sheet with a California license plate, as well as one for Florida. So this is coast to coast. Coming to you live, coast to coast. Anyway, we have a white Daytona decal, red and black. So you do get choices for these for different colors. And there is a nice air cleaner decal on here as well. And that concludes our look at the AMT 1969 Dodge Daytona. Now, if you've built this model in the past and you've got a really good example of it, please share it on our Facebook page and I'll try to leave the link in the description down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of the 1969 Dodge Daytona by AMT. And tune in next week when we will be taking a look at some more great model car kits. But in order to do that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're one of the first ones to see it. And if you're looking for model car kits, this one's not for sale, it's mine. But if you are looking for model car kits, don't forget to check out our crazy selection down at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Hopefully you won't be disappointed. <laughs> and until next time, keep it on the track.